Hello, everybody, and welcome to this video where today we are going to go over something I actually talked about on a live stream. I can't remember. It was maybe like two weeks ago. People keep either like talking to me about this or sending me emails or sending me comments. So I wanted to, you know, give my point of view on some shit. And what that is, is how do you continue to create, continue your writing habits, continue making art when you are a new parent? Okay. Now, some of this might actually also like work if you are a parent who is new at being an artist. I think it kind of goes both ways. I cannot tell you how to do the thing when you have a new kid in your life because it's a completely bizarre, wild ride for everybody and it's gonna be different for everybody. But what I can share with you is my experience when I became a father and how I was able to do the stuff that I did. Now, I had my child at a very young age. I mean, not a very young age, but I was still a stupid fucking kid when I had a kid. Babies making babies, am I right? During the time my girlfriend was pregnant, this was right around a very, like crazy transitional period in my life. I had just lost a job that I really liked. I've only had like maybe like one or two jobs that I've actually liked. And I was there for, I don't know, maybe like two years, which at the time, well, actually my whole life, that was a really long time. I was bartending and I was teaching bartending. And then because I lost that job and it was kind of sudden, I didn't know what I was going to do, and the band I was in had just basically kind of broken up. Like, we didn't know what we were doing. We, like, had just recorded an album about a year before and had been trying to put a bunch of shit together. We had a manager who made us a lot of promises and wasn't coming through with any of them. All of us, except the drummer, lived in this one apartment in Orange County. Wow, this is a really long story. I'm really telling you guys the story. So I hope you're enjoying yourself. Get some fucking popcorn and some coffee. And then when I found out that we that I lost my job and I wasn't going to be able to afford living in that place anymore, the our bass player moved out he just left I can't remember where he went he just like he just wasn't there anymore and me and the guitar player were trying to figure out what we were gonna do and he just said I'm like one day like before I could even like figure out what I was gonna do said he was gonna move back in with his parents we were probably how old was I at this time like 23 or something 22 or 23 I don't fucking know something like that early 20s and so I didn't know what I was gonna do um I it a couple different times in my life up to this point I had done this thing where I kind of lived in my car and just like traveled and played like acoustic shows at bars and stuff and coffee shops. So I started that up again, went up north for a little bit. And during this time, I was seeing my girlfriend off and on, the woman who would end up being pregnant with my kid. It was very low key, long story short, because she was a lesbian and she didn't want her friends to know that she was actually seeing a guy now. So that's a whole other fucking thing, which made this whole situation really weird. Oh my God, this is a long story. Sorry. So eventually she told me she missed me and said I could just move in with her if I wanted to. At the time, I 
kind of thought it was cool, but I was kind of freaked out because I'd only lived with one other woman up before that. And that did not end right. It did not end nicely at all. So I wasn't expecting a whole lot, right? So I move in with my girlfriend in Costa Mesa. Within seconds, she was pregnant. Like, it, was, it wasn't even funny. Like, it happened immediately. This kind of shook my world a little bit because she, there were, hmm, I don't know how much of this I should actually say because this is pretty fucked up. There were some situations where I had to make a lot of promises in order for her to keep the baby. Let's say that. Okay. It was so weird because it was like as soon as I heard that she was pregnant and as soon as I heard she might not want to keep the baby. I don't know what came over me, but it was just like this whole like you have to protect this kid. This kid is fucked if you don't protect this kid. That was just like my whole thing in my head. And I know it sounds wild or crazy, but it's like, I was in a really dark spot at this time. This is actually when I started writing all of the songs that would become the Goodbye Hope albums that you could listen to everywhere. Really depressing shit. I was, um, the, uh, offing myself thought was happening a lot because it just seemed like everything I was doing wasn't working. It was fucking with my head a lot. And I was having this string of jobs. Like I would work at a place for like three days, get fired, work at a place for a week, quit. Um, it was just this constant thing. And during this time, too, I was hosting open mic nights at a bunch of different um, coffee shops um, in Orange County. So I was performing probably at least three nights a week, sometimes four nights a week at different bars and coffee shops. And so musically, I felt pretty good because I was playing a lot, but I didn't understand what was going on. And then there were a lot of problems with the pregnancy. Then I had an accident and ripped my stomach open from my crotch to my diaphragm. That, that was awesome. And so for the last uh, few months of the pregnancy, both me and my partner were on bed rest. So that was a fucking shit show. Blah, 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 blah. Moving right along. Then we were playing Risk one evening. We were listening to Johnny Cash and Weezer while we were playing Risk. And then Willie Nelson was in the car. Her water broke. She was ready to go. We went. The baby was born within two hours. Okay. When that happened, I had so much emotion running through my body. The baby was premature. She had to be in the ICU for four days and I had to be there all the time and feed her and all that stuff. Uh, Cause I can't remember what was wrong with my girlfriend at the time, but she couldn't do any of this stuff. I don't know. It was just like me and my kid from that moment on. You know, um, if I can find the picture of the first time I held my kid, I'll put that on there. Make you guys fucking cry and shit. It was very emotional. Whatever. And I look so young and so unscarred by the world, even though I'd already been fucked over a hundred times. Whatever. So as far as inspiration goes, when my kid showed up, it went to a crazy degree and all I wanted to do was create. All I wanted to do was this. I was writing tons and tons and tons of songs. And then during this time too, I wrote not all the songs, but a good majority of what would be like the next three Creeperson albums. Okay, and Creeperson hadn't even started yet. I was doing the precursor to Creeperson was this weird kind of gothy thing called um the horror whores catchy right um that i was doing with my girlfriend and it was like more like electronica gothy shit doesn't matter 
Um, and I was still doing the solo shit, which at the time was called the Matt Wall Massacre. And it was just me. I also decided that I wanted to try to write a film script during this period because I became horribly agoraphobic in regards to being away from my family. Okay. So like if I went to the grocery store, I would assume that somebody would come in and murder my family while I was gone. If I like had to do the open mic nights or something like that, I would assume I would come back home and the whole place would just be covered in blood and everyone would be dead. Or I would like look into the crib if I like went and took the trash out. And when I looked into the crib, there wouldn't be a baby in there anymore. Just shit like that. So the way I dealt with that fear was I wrote this script called Bloodlust Romance about a home invasion robbery thing that like twisted up on its head to where the home invasion people were really fucked up people. They come in and they find out that the people they're invading are way more fucked up than they are kind of shit. And that was how I dealt with this because I was like, no matter who comes in here, I am so much more fucking demented than these fucking people. And I will prove it because I could not figure out how to go outside without running back home. Because I would go to the grocery store, start filling the cart up, and then get a horrible thought in my head and just leave the cart in the middle of the store and run home and just make sure everything was okay. There, I, there were jobs I had that I would just leave in the middle of work because I got scared that something was going to happen. It, it was wild after this period creeperson started up wrote a script and tried to make a movie um i was still doing the acoustic shows and writing acoustic stuff um i was writing a little bit of poetry during this period too uh which was different because i hadn't been doing that for a few years at this point but what I'm trying to get at is, is that the thing that drove my inspiration were the fears I was having about being a new father, um, being the provider for another fucking human life, worrying how I'm going to fuck that kid up and hoping that I don't. Trying to figure out how me and this woman who, like drives me crazy most of the time now have to like co-parent a small little bag of blood and bone and skin you know like what the fuck how is this happening and so i wasn't writing about like ooh, look at that leaf or look at that tree or oh water's wet and air is cold it was like i'm going to fucking ruin everything how do I not ruin everything? It was like my therapy. It was me dealing with the stuff. Me writing a script about murdering a ton of people who were going to try to kill my family. All that shit and all I was doing was working through how to be an adult, how to be a parent, how to be a partner. And like, I don't know if I ever figured it out right, but I mean, like my kid is gonna be fucking old enough to drink here in a couple days and um so i did something you know what i'm saying what i'm trying to get at here is not everyone's situation is going to be the same but what i want to encourage you to do as a new parent all of these fears that you're having all of these uncertainties that you have write that shit out work that out Okay, like you have a gift that a lot of other people don't have, which is the ability to work on your emotions and your fears and all of this shit in your art. A lot of people don't have this ability to fucking do it. You do. Okay, or else you wouldn't be fucking watching this video. Okay, so take that gift you have and try to work out what your fears are. But the thing you got to do 
You have to be fucking honest with yourself when you are creating this. Don't like hide shit. Don't hold back. If you're not being honest and real, like you're not going to write anything and it's not going to feel good when you write it. But if you are being honest and real with your emotions and feelings, it is going to feel like you slit yourself and just and poured everything out. There will be a huge release. If you aren't feeling the release, you aren't going deep enough. You aren't being real with yourself. Okay? Because when someone asks me, how do you find the time to write and create as a new parent? It totally depends on what it is that you are hiding from yourself. That what it is that you are afraid to see of yourself. Because that's the only thing that's going to make it different. Like, I know babies are up every two fucking seconds and needing something and shit. But there's a lot of time that they're not. Okay? So, figure out what to do with all of that shit. You know what I'm saying? But you have to be honest with yourself. And you have to be real. And you have to dig deep. Okay? So, if you have any questions about this, leave it down in the comments below. Join the crew. Type hard. And I will talk to all of you guys later.